So when I have time, I always cut apart as many part, parts that I get, it, get a hold of. Since I'm on the vacuum pump, I wanted to cut this uh, Ford F-150. I want to see the dryer and I was trying to see how much oil was inside. And I was looking at the shape of these, uh, you see, can you see the dust coming off of that? Oh, they're dirty inside, but also the aluminum itself was starting to break down. Yeah, you salt corrosion. It's not really bad, but it was starting. It was obvious when I rip it. Oh, I can't rip it right now. Um, cutting that off was not easy. They made this in a way where that cap, you see where I busted off the aluminum? The reason I did that was I could not get the snap ring out of there. So I forced the snap ring. I literally bent the metal backwards, snapped it off, got the snap ring on, but then I couldn't remove that center plug in there. And um, the way they made the snap ring, if you can see the dirty indentions, if you tried to collapse the snap ring, it would collapse in and it would hit that center piece. Do you see how that protrudes up? Making it so you can't remove the snap ring. So they don't want you to service these. Let's see if I can get this back, there you go. Now there's the subcooling. Now you see those right there, that's subcooling. Everything else is your temperature drop. So your high side comes in, or actually it comes in here. It fills up this pass, it goes over, it goes, it comes down, it goes over, goes into, oh no, it goes over again. Let's see how this one goes. I'm getting hella confused over here. Yeah, there we go. It goes right there. Nope, that is wrong one. Yep, nope. Right. Sorry guys, I'm turned upside down and backwards here. So we're upside down. And uh, let me put it the right way so you guys can get a better, better view of the way it was looking in the vehicle instead of holding it upside down for you guys. There's the ports. Now we're the front of the vehicle. See where it's painted? Let's put paint to paint, just like that. So if you look inside there, do you see that port? Will it uh, view in there? There you go. Do you see that port right there? That is not the outlet. That is the inlet. That little channel right there is from this pass right here. So this is the hot vapor gas that is starting to turn into a liquid. It's, it's part liquid and vapor as it enters here. So it comes all the way down there to that bottom. It fills up in this tube. The oil and the liquid fall to the bottom. The vapor is on the top. And then it goes inside through a filter in there. Let's get that out of there. If you want to look inside there. Can't really see. I'm trying to see how clean it is. You could see that port. Do you see that port right there? Let me see if I could get you some light. Okay, that's the port where the vapor, the oil, and a little bit of liquid enter the system. In this position. It goes in here, it fills this whole area up, and the liquid falls to the bottom. And it has to pass, you see that little piece of plastic right there? That blocks it off. So the liquid is up here. And it has to go through the BBs, through the desiccant material, it has to go through that filter material. And where that little flare, you see that little tiny flare sticking out there? Refrigerant doesn't pass that, it has, it's forced to go inside because on top is where that hole comes in. Then it comes out of the bottom through the filter again and it fills just this bottom area right here where this one, two, three, four, five refrigerant two passages are located. And uh, mostly liquid and very little vapor go right out of those ports right there where you see that hole. Not the hole up there, that's the entrance stuff. The higher port inside, that goes into the big tube on top. The lower port, after it goes through the filter and liquid and oil come out the bottom, go out that hole you see drilled right there. And one, two, let's get that back there again. one two and then down below where it's off three four so the bottom four those guys right there one two three four these bottom four right here are filled with liquid under ideal perfect conditions and that liquid has the air go through it and that is your subcooling right there 
This is your vapor pass, drop pressure, drop temperature. This is your liquid out. And then going into subcooling before it goes liquid out and delivers to the expansion valve. And that's how this one, and they made this unserviceable. Nobody's gonna take that snap ring that was off there. Nobody's gonna take that off and replace that. They force you to uh, buy a brand new Ford. Well, and I would recommend getting a Ford one anyway. This is the original and he bought the original from the Ford dealer. So I think that was it. That was the original right there. And so he has the original in there and I noticed right away he has brand new gaskets. They're the metal gaskets. And that's one thing about this technician here. No matter what it is, he always buys new gaskets, seals, everything. He never reuses seals. He hunts down seals. And uh, I usually never have to worry about leaks at all on him. He doesn't care if they're the seals that are on the coolant tubes, seals around spark plug boot. If something has a seal, he is ordering it. That's the difference of technician who doesn't have usually problems and technicians who have problems. You know the technician, oh yeah, we get away with doing it. But when it fails that one time, oh man, it failed. Well, when you do this, you don't have to worry about failures. And uh, I'm always glad when I come to work on his vehicles. I don't have to worry like I do in many of the other shops. See you guys later.